data. It's a topic which we think has nothing to do with astrophotography, but actually it's at the core of it. We generate with astrophotography tons and tons and tons of data. One XISF has 300 megabytes, which means three is a gigabyte, 30 is 10 gigabyte, 300 is 100 gigabyte, and 300 XISFs are easily accumulated with one night of shooting. So what do we do with all this data? How do we store it so that it's safe, that we find again what we need, and that we can access it at any time in a fast way? All of that right after the trailer. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sascha from Switzerland. So good to meet you and thanks for watching my channel. So let me tell you about my journey of data storage and yours might sound rather similar. So you might start quite innocently storing the subs and the pics inside projects and everything on your hard drive until pretty soon you realize that's a lot of data and your hard drive is not that big. So what to do? Easy. We buy an external drive. Me for example, I bought a four terabyte SSD. Little drive, issue solved. Until this four terabyte drive also gets full. What to do? You buy a second one and a third. And it's hard to know what is still on which drive. Obviously nothing is backupped. And there comes also a moment where you start to question, do I really need these subs? Or can I delete them and save a lot of space? But what if in a year or two down the road, a revolutionary new stacking technology comes up, which creates a 10 time better output? Hypothetically, wouldn't we regret having thrown away all our subs? So that was the moment when I seriously started to considering buying a NAS, a network attached storage system. Obviously, I could have gone now with a standard model from one of the very known brands, but you know myself, I always like a little bit the special, the cutting edge stuff. So I was looking around and I found an ass which I fell in love with, the Asastore Flash Store 12. So that's how it looks like. It's very small, it's completely silent, and it consists only out of 12 SSD ports, no moving parts. So if you go with four terabyte SSDs, that means 48 terabyte in such a small thing. And the best thing is at the end, it has a 10 gigabit ethernet port, so you can fully utilize the speed of the SSDs. And actually it's not even that expensive. It's around $800 for really cutting edge technology. And so I approached Asus Store and I asked them if they can provide one for me so that I can show it to you. And obviously also try it out myself. And I told them my whole use case. And funny enough, they were like, mm, I think we have something better for you. And I listened, I understood, and I went with their proposal. That is what I will show you in a second. But let's first look at the downside of the flash store, which might not be a downside for you. And I, th I still think it's an amazing piece. There's two problems that it has. First of all, 48 terabytes sounds amazing, but we have to use RAID because we wanna be on the safe side. If one or two of these SSDs dies, we do not wanna lose our data. So we have to apply RAID 5. And so at the end, we are down at about 44 terabytes. That sounds like a lot, but as we already know, space fills up fast. So it's actually in our situation good when we have a scalable solution. And there's another issue with it, especially for the a little bit price sensitive people among us. A four terabyte SSD costs at the moment $300. That's not that expensive, but you need 12. And with 12, you are at a whooping $3,600 just for the SSDs. And now we're talking money. 
So from that point of view, I would say the flash star is great if you do not shoot full frame, if you don't live at a place where you shoot like every night a year, and obviously if the $3,600 are no big issue for you. Then I would really go with that, it's cool. But if you have huge amount of data and you are depending on the scalability of a solution, and if your budget is a little bit limited, then you do the same as I did. And I went with the recommendation, and that's this here, the Nimbus Store Gen 2, the four bay version. And actually, if I take here this magnetic plate away, you see the four bays for the hard drives. And so you might wonder, Sasha, what's so special about this? This is a normal four bay NAS, like of any other provider. But the interesting part is that it isn't. Because what it has, what most other competitors don't have, it has also four M2 slots for SSDs. And in addition to that, it has at the back two 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports. And if you connect both of them to a switch, you are at five gigabit. And I've tried it out, it works. And so also here you can with very high speeds actually transfer data from your NAS to your computer and back. Now let's talk about the scalability for a second. First of all, in our days, you get hard drives up to, I think, 24 terabytes per hard drive. I got now 16 terabyte, but you can go up higher. So if you go with the 24 terabyte, you are already at 96 terabyte without the SSDs. And with the SSDs, you come to over 100 terabyte, which fits into this box. So that's easy double than the flash door and for a much cheaper price. But what if you down the line need more space? The great part is that it has 10 gigabit USB 3.2 ports and on these you can hook an extension with another four base. So theoretically you could add another 100 terabytes to it and just bind it in the same RAID 5 array. No problem at all. So with a potential 200 terabytes, I think for a very long time, <laughs> you should have enough storage. But let's go back to these SSDs, because that's the interesting part. You could say, what do I do now with these few SSDs? But the great part is that they serve, at least partially, you can use two bays for caching. So what I did now for all the four bays, I bought two terabyte SSDs. And two of them I use as cache, read and write, on a RAID 1 array. So one is backed by the other. So I have two terabyte of cache, which means all the data that flows into this NAS first goes on the cache SSD, on an SSD speed, and then down to the hard drive. And in the same way, the most common files are stored in the cache and you can access them with SSD speed. And that makes this NAS so unique. So you have the advantages of the cheap hard drive space together with the advantages of the speed of the SSDs. So what else? It has a fast processor inside, a quad-core Intel Celeron. It has even an HDMI port integrated so you can hook it right up to your TV if you set it up at your TV and you can use it as a media center. I actually loaded all my movies on the NAS and with Jellyfin, I can actually access them from any TV in the house. And even if it's 4K, it plays perfectly. I also use it now for movie editing with Final Cut, also works perfectly. And by the way, the memory, four gigabytes are already in there and you can add some dead cheap DDR4 memory if you want to have more. That's very easy. So that all sounds really great. Is there any drawback, you might ask? And they are from my point too. One, I would have loved that also this NAS would have an integrated 10 gigabit ethernet port. I really don't understand, given that at the flash door it was possible, why this was not possible here instead of the two 2.5. 
And the other thing is that hard drives by definition are moving things, which means they make noise. That's not the fault of Asestore, but that's just a reality. And quite honestly, I don't want to have this thing anywhere close to where I work or relax or anything like that. So I bought some seven and a half meter ethernet cables and I put an ass in a storage room close to my office here. So there it can rumble and it doesn't matter to me. But again, this is with any NAS which has hard drives in there. That's just by definition also with the RAID setup that if it writes on one hard drive, it automatically has also to write on the other hard drives to secure the file and that just makes noise. So if you want to have your NAS somewhere very close, I will consider the flash door. <laughs> so given the setup of such NAS is not so trivial, I created a full video where I show you how I unbox and do the whole setup with the installation of the SSDs and the hard drives and everything you have to do on the computer. So depending on when you watch this video, this will either already be out or it will come out in about a week or two. And if you stayed with me until now, I have a goodie for you. Because I was approached when I would talk about data, if I could tell you how I organize my sessions. And I want to show you that now. You see it right here. I create for each object I shoot at a night or at more than one night, one folder. In this folder is a subfolder with the subs and the calibration frames. You can either add the calibration frames or the masters, but be aware that if you come back to this folder in a year or two years, and you did not save your calibration frames, you will not know anymore which one match now, and that makes your subs much less useful. In the second subfolder, I save the raw files, the output from the stacking. In the third subfolder, I collect all the savings I did in between the processing or full pixel inside projects. And in the fourth subfolder, I collect the finals. And with that, it's very easy to find the object that you're looking for. And then within this object, exactly the level of files that you need. So I hope this was helpful. And perhaps we see each other again when I unbox and set up the Nimbus Store Gen 2. Until then, clear skies.